Hi there. Welcome back to the Wellbeing Designers podcast. I am your host, Reka Deak. On this podcast, I dive into conversations with well-being leaders from across the globe. These individuals might hold positions like head of well-being in large organizations. We have had guests on the show as well who are driving global change in this area and creating international forums to exchange on the topic of well-being. What unites them all? They want to make the world a better place through focusing on well-being. They might be the ones who are responsible for the well-being of hundreds, thousands, or ten thousands of individuals. They might be the catalyst to keep decision makers, CEOs engaged in this conversation about well-being. And they might be the ones who are proving that employee well-being is not just a nice to have, but it's truly a strategic enabler of sustainable performance and business success. I call these people well-being designers. They are the connectors bridging the gap between well-being leaders across companies and countries. So sit back, relax, and enjoy listening to these incredible individuals and learning from them. Remember, we can shape the future of work together, which is truly human-centric, and prioritize well-being like never before. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 16 of the Wellbeing Designers podcast. Today's guest is Nasrin Oskwi, the global well-being lead at Deutsche Bank, one of the world's leading financial services providers with 89,000 employees operating in 58 countries. Since Nasrin took on the role, she has written and started to implement Deutsche Bank's well-being strategy with the goal to make well-being part of a sustainable performance culture. Nasrin is a strong problem solver and innovative thinker who passionately drives culture change initiatives with a focus on well-being and leadership development. She has successfully led transformative employee engagement, well-being and diversity initiatives to create a health-promoting and caring work environment where employees can bring their whole selves to work, feel supported and happy so they can perform at their best and thrive in their careers. Good morning, Nasrin. Good morning, Reka. How are you? Very well, thank you. What about you? You are in London, so we have one hour difference and I sit in Switzerland. <laughs> I'm I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, weather is awful in London at the moment. It's very grey, but I'm very happy to be here with you today. So looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, yeah, same on my side. I am really honored and happy that you accepted to be here and uh, be part of the Wellbeing Designer podcast community from now on. And uh, yeah, uh, we are really curious, you know, about your journey mm -hmm. and about Deutsche Bank's journey on this mm -hmm. uh, um, Wellbeing uh, evolution. So mm -hmm. uh, let's start with you as a person. Um, mm -hmm. So who is uh, Nasrin beyond your bio and how did you get into this exciting position to lead mm -hmm. well-being at Deutsche mm -hmm. Bank? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm 17 years at Deutsche Bank. I'm German, as you can hear by my accent. I can't get rid of it. I live <laughs> since 13 years in London. And yeah, how, how I did come to well-being. I before my role, so I started the role of global um, well-being lead in October 21, so during the pandemic, basically. Before that, I did lead people strategies. So those were, you know, volunteer network-led initiatives from the business for the business. And we, we did develop, you know, development programs focusing on managers. There was DE&I initiatives. And well-being was always part of it, but... 
I would say on the surface. So it did focus a lot on offering yoga or, you know, encouraging to meditation. We had speakers there. So all good stuff. But yeah, so it wasn't really, we, we always used the analogy gym, not spa. So we were more in the spa mode back then. Then in 2018, we started to train our first cohort of mental health first aiders. And that when I think it made click and everyone realized, wow, actually we all have a mental health. When we go to work, we can't leave our mental health at home. And it does impact um, the way we work together. It does impact our, you know, our well-being at work. And at the end of the day, our well-being does impact our productivity. So as an employer, we should have a very keen interest in the well-being of our people. And that's when we started really to look into it. So apart from mental health first aiders, we did offer a lot of educational materials. We had a lot of storytelling because I think that's the most way of really engaging employees. It's always great to have external speakers and subject matter experts, and that's important. But hearing from a director from a division you're in that he had suicidal thoughts and how he overcame them. That's something really powerful. Or how colleagues have, for example, struggled with bereavement, something that will unfortunately impact all of us, us at some point, right? So all those really circumstantial life cycle events, right? So it, they do impact us at work. And then the pandemic hit. <laughs> and I think... During the pandemic, even skeptics realized we all have a mental health because I think it was something incredibly scary and it did impact all of us, every single one of us, no matter what corporate title or what kind of affiliation they had before with well-being. And then in October 21, our senior management really wanted to yeah, go down the route of a strategic approach and created the role for the global well-being lead, which I applied for. And yeah, I'm very happy happy to to do it now oh thanks for sharing the, the your story and already your Deutsche Bank story um mm. and uh, congratulations to your promotion because you Thank were you just promoted so this is uh, really the the proof of the amazing work that you have done mm. and also the proof how you know Deutsche Bank's attitude towards mm -hmm. well-being is right now because we just discussed before we started this podcast mm. that there are cases we have like friends colleagues out there mm. whose company after covid decided you know not to deal with well-being uh, mm. so much mm. and this you know the the time will prove or or show us you know how this approach uh, works out mm. Mm. absolutely yeah. So yeah, great to hear as the Deutsche Bank was already on this journey before mm. COVID. Mm. And yeah, you totally, you know, reflect my personal experience as well. Mm. When I started in this space 2019, the conversations mm -hmm. were about yoga classes, Jimabo, mm. and you know, less about the, the systemic approach and mm -hmm. the culture. Mm -hmm. Uh, so how would you then describe uh, right now um, the well-being uh, um, approach? Like every company has their own like framework, strategy. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. mentioned also the videos. Could you share a bit about the overarching uh, approach and strategy? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So when I started the role, I wanted to understand the status quo. And I did look a lot at external research because there's brilliant stuff out there from, you know, McKinsey, Gallup, etc. But I really wanted to understand what does well-being mean for Deutsche Bank employees. So I did conduct around 400 conversations about well-being just to understand wow. <laughs> what does well-being mean for you, what is important for you, what is going well, where do we need to get better. And I always scheduled 30 minutes for those interviews. They always overrun. People have so much to say about well-being because you know what? It does affect all of us and it's a very personal matter. So yeah. it was incredibly insightful. And the interesting can thing I was... Can I have yeah. a question, an interview of course question? You can. I also have, have this question sometimes on my keynotes. Yeah. I start with this, you know, okay, yeah. well-being, but what does it mean if we go into measurement? 
like we yeah. cannot measure something that we don't know. And yeah. then I like to ask, what does well-being mean to you at work? Mm. And it's interesting the the difference. People mm. give different answers. Have mm. you also uh, tapped into this? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, at work, you know, I, I think the most important thing at work is that you want to feel appreciated, that you want to do meaningful work, that you want to have a purpose. And then, of course, factors like stress, right? They do play into at work stress. So those are the factors. But then when you think about it, it's it's very similar to your private life, isn't it? Because in your private life, you want to feel appreciated, you want to have a purpose. So I think it really, really goes very, very closely together. It's us as a human being and our well-being as a human being. And we always talked about bringing your whole self to work in the DE&I context. No, we bring our whole self to work with our mental health, with our physical health, etc. as well, right? So yeah. That that's what we really need to realize. And and we only have this one well-being and health. So we need to look after it in our private life and, and at home. You have one body, right? Yeah. You cannot yeah. bring another body to work <laughs> no. and then leave it. No. Yeah, leave it at home, right? Yeah. I like and that it. was there was always, I think, it it was a thing, right? That people did have a work persona and but it never goes well. I mean, because the moment you try to pretend to be someone else or you're hiding everything, it never goes well because you're not authentic, right? Especially yeah. when you're a leader or when you're a manager, et cetera. So, mm. yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, so after I've conducted the interviews, I was really surprised that it was very similar because I did conduct the interviews globally, right? So, but we had the same sentiments in America, in Germany, in APAC, etc. We had a lot of stuff that was going well. So we have great benefits. Work culture was, was good. But, you know, the key points that we needed to address was stigma. That was one of the points. And, and that varies a lot from country to country. So in the UK, we talk about everything because in society, there's a lot going on, right? So uh, a lot of celebrities talk about their mental health. Menopause is a big topic. So people do talk very openly about, you know, taboo topics that were taboo topics a few years back. Germany is very different, for example. They are starting their mental health journey now. Mm -hmm. I do feel really opening up and are more perceptive, and it's really great to see. So you have to be very careful as well how you implement those those initiatives because there's there's there are big differences. So the points that we needed to address was really stigma, was stress, and that's not only work stress, it's also the stress from the outside world because you know, we we had a pandemic, we introduced hybrid working, there is a war in Ukraine going on, there's just so much noise in the outside world. And again, we can't just leave that at home, it does impact us, right? So those were the topics, tone from the top, people wanted to hear more around well-being from our leaders and manager capability and also enablement right? We have great managers, but we need to give them the tools to have those conversations about mental health, for example. So that's that's so important. Our managers have to do deal with so much change at the moment, you know, high, all of a sudden from one day to the other, you had to manage a remote team, then a hybrid team. There's, we're going through a transformation, et cetera. People are very stressed. So there's a lot of burden on managers. So we really need to focus on them because we strongly believe they are the change agents on the ground. We do have our senior management, mm -hmm. but in your everyday interaction, we do have our managers. So those were like the key points and key takeaways that we had. And it was good to see that we were that we had a lot of good stuff going on. So we needed to leverage that and we needed to address the points where we needed to get better at. Mm -hmm. And then how did you collect and created the whole global well-being strategy out of this? Yeah, I did. So we, we did made strategic choices, right, to, to focus on, on, on the points we wanted to address. And the first one was really that we want to look at behavioral change initiatives and make well-being part of our everyday sustainable performance culture. Mm -hmm. Really integrated into everything we do, how we lead, how we manage, how we work, how we talk with each other, etc. 
And we have started implementing well-being in our learning ecosystem. So every training does contain a part of well-being. We did create a top of the house engagement model, which is really cool. And I'm very proud of that. So one of our management board members is our well-being sponsor. And I have a well-being champion in every global divisional leadership team. And that's amazing. Hmm. So I, when I want to talk about well-being, I can just call one person and that person will be open for that conversation. And they support me with sending out communication within their divisions. I've been invited to town halls. So well-being was a normal agenda point because normally mm -hmm. you just have, you know, well-being events during World Mental Health Week, etc. No, yeah. It was on the agenda between mm -hmm. results and, you know, other updates, business updates. Yeah, and yeah. that makes it really, really powerful, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, yeah. And the second point was really that we don't want to well-being at people. We want to do it with our people because mm -hmm. there were so many. So Deutsche Bank is an 89,000 people organization. It's big right? We have yeah. 58 countries. So there are a lot of volunteer networks. We've got over 580 mental health first aiders globally. We do have the benefits teams. So we do have a lot of well-being stakeholders in the bank that are there already. And we needed to bring them together and align it a little bit and just give it more oomph with really working very closely and in very close collaboration with each other, right? And um, we are involving our senior stakeholders at the same time and are really explaining why well-being is so important because there's a business case for every employer. It's, it's not a nice to have, it's yeah. a business imperative. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's really something we need to bring over the line. So having really our people there and getting the buy-in from them and getting the buy-in from our senior management makes it really powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you mentioned the behavioral change, right? That you yeah. try to plug it in into every learning uh, yeah. as a module or or yeah, in any way. The top of house engagement. So mm. involve senior stakeholders to mm. be like sponsors, right? And mm. role models. Mm. And then the second one was that you do it with people, not at mm. people. So mm -hmm. I to use the word also co-create right yeah. co-create yeah. with the mm -hmm. people that's very together. nice yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah yeah and the business case and the numbers i love to hear that what you say because there are so in so many cases you know companies that the dream where companies wanna be like also through what i see through my work with them like they mm. they might have the you know webinars or mm. some programs but how you take the next step to bring mm. it into the culture and the everyday ways of working mm. That's what you, as I see, mastered. Mm. So the question is a bit, what's next? Uh, mm. And then we will still talk about, you know, the current, but we are in this flow now. So mm. I see that I love also, you know, George Bersin's model about the healthy organization. Mm. And I really see that you are, you know, there. Mm. So how do you see that uh, unfolding or amplifying even more? Mm. I think we continue what we're doing. The beauty of a topic like well-being is we can always adjust and recalibrate, right? So this year, for example, I really want to focus on smart and healthy ways of working because, as I said, people are stressed and, and we only have our own health and we are the only ones who are responsible for it and we are not working in healthy ways at all not that that's not a deutsche bank specific um challenge i think um it's it, it does happen everywhere so mm -hmm. think back to back meetings no breaks um multitasking multitasking reduces your productivity by 40% why mm -hmm. do we do it? Especially in times of Teams and Zoom meetings, right? So yeah. people are in a meeting, then they check their emails, second screen, very tempting. You always look, maybe reply to an email, but then you don't listen to the to the meeting. If I sit in meetings from nine o'clock to six o'clock without having a break, I really can't remember what I discussed at nine o'clock. And we need also time. We should block time in our calendars for office-based jobs where we just block it for a for creativity for maybe reading emails you know having the feeling of being in control is so important and then when workload or stress gets too much 
you need to address it. You need to talk to your manager about it before you get ill, right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes maybe the manager doesn't sit in the same location or the manager sits on a different floor and doesn't see you. You need to address it. You need to ask for help when you need it, or you need to admit I've made a mistake, for example, right? It's it's just really those ways of working. One really interesting topic we are looking in is meeting culture. We're sitting in way too many meetings that are not mm -hmm. relevant for us. So what we have done, and that it works really cool, so our um, settings and outlook for meetings are now 25 and 50 minutes instead of mm -hmm. um, 30 and 60 minutes. And that gives you always at least least 10 minutes between a meeting, right? When you have a full hour meeting, we encourage people to be on time. We encourage people to have an agenda. We encourage people to really check, is this meeting relevant for me? Dare to mm -hmm. decline. You know, there was a big campaign yeah. and it will take time. It will take two, three years time. But I think just raising awareness and making people, just giving them the power to you are in charge. Take responsibility mm -hmm. of your health. Try to yeah. try to achieve your goals in a healthy way. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to be very powerful, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. I see the similar way. So yeah, workload is one of the things. And, and it's interesting because we have done, you know, so many things since we started this kind of work after the industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't become like, okay, we became more productive, but we just, you know, yeah. kept adding more and more. Yeah. So it's not that we can use that time for something else, for our own well-being. Yeah. And this is where I see now this mindset shift that you could then, how you could work a bit less using like AI. I am a big believer. <laughs> that this could help us but you know mm. we have to like do it right now and and uh, engrave this positivity around it that you can be more productive uh, mm. if you do it smart and then use your time to actually yeah, then take care of your well-being absolutely and the second topic is psychological safety and mm. in the past i think us and a lot of other companies have focused on leaders and managers creating a psychological safe space which is incredibly important but we need to engage our employees on the topic of psychological safety as well mm. because they need to speak up they need to they need to give constructive feedback they need to do something, you know, they have a role as well that they need to play. We can't just always yeah. wait for things to happen or things to be resolved. Mm. We should take some responsibility back. So it's really just giving, yeah, empower our employees and giving them some inspiration. And um, we want to achieve this through education, through storytelling, through really talking about this in, again, town halls, in our communication, et cetera, and, and role modeling it as well from the top. So I'm, I'm really keen to see if that is going to work out. And and yeah, we, we will still focus on our managers. Of course, we have just created a great e-learning, which we will back up with engage sessions so people can ask questions afterwards, where the topic is well-being, self and others, because it's the same like on a flight, oxygen mask first, right? And that's something managers need to realize. They need to look after their own well-being. So we have exercises in there like the stress container, etc., just to raise awareness. And then meeting culture and hybrid working, because for managers, it's new, right? And how do I encourage my team to hybrid work? What are great ideas? For example, having a team day together in the office so people feel happy that they're in the office. That's our that's social connected well-being dimension right because mm -hmm. I think after the pandemic everyone felt a bit lost maybe yeah. you know you came to the office and it looked absolutely different but now it's fun again to be in the office and you can you know meet and collaborate in person and it is different than on zoom or teams yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so true. And you mentioned yeah, the responsibility that sometimes leaders are in charge even for this, but actually we we all of us are in charge mm -hmm. for our own well-being. We cannot yeah. just, you know, expect everything. And uh, that's what I love. I, I, I try to say this as much as I can, that well-being is uh, like this movement is helping to democratize well-being, mm -hmm. you know, that it's not only for leaders still, mm -hmm. they, you know, role modeling and everything mm -hmm. is super important, but it's really for everyone. And I mm -hmm. think it's a big momentum. And even if it's for mm -hmm. leaders, mm -hmm. it's about how they can empower their teams to then, 
take exactly. care of their well-being. Yeah, hmm. absolutely. Okay, so you mentioned meeting culture, psychological safety. Is there a third one for the future? Or <laughs> we we are working on some external campaigns, and we we are growing our mental health first aider community in Germany, which is really exciting. So we have 120 mental health first aiders already. So there's a there's a huge interest now, and it makes me really really happy to see the momentum in Germany at the moment. And when we want to keep on educating. And yeah, and then just really plugging into everything we are doing. So we are we are part of the people experience and sustainable performance culture team. So and that alone tells you that where would we have sit. been my next question, actually. Yeah. So where are you in the organization? Yeah. And that, yeah. that really tells you where we sit because when I look at some of our competitors, I think the most common one is that it sits within DE and I. Mm-hmm. But there's more than DE and I to well-being. Right. Yeah. It, it it we we do overlap a lot and I work very, very closely with the DEI team because those topics are, you know, very, very closely connected, but it is more than just DEI. And yeah, I th- I think that that shows you where we sit. Then in some companies it still sits with health and safety, which <laughs> which is something very different again, right? I mean, it's an about, evolution. We, we also look into that. So I yeah. work very closely with that team as well. And mm-hmm. we work very closely with our real estate team as well, which is really exciting because yeah. we do have our future of office concept. And in the new offices, we look at colors, we look at light, we look at quiet zones for, for our neurodivergent colleagues, for example. So well-being plays a huge part on, on how we are setting up our future offices. And that's really mm-hmm. exciting. So really plugging in everywhere. And that's plenty to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really great. Yeah, that's really a secret. One of the secret sources here to you know, collaborate with everyone. It's of course, uh, you are leading it, but it's not only on you. It's uh, everyone oh, no, no, no. the responsibility. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> okay, so we arrived to, to one of the uh, most exciting questions always on the podcast is the measurement. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you measure well-being? You know, mm-hmm. and it's it's important here that yeah, uh, some companies still, you know, measure the engagement only that, yeah, it's mm-hmm. nice to have people are involved. But then what about really the impact? You know, mm-hmm. how do we tap into that, the behavioral change, what you say? So I would be really keen to hear some something that mm-hmm. is not secretive. <laughs> Mm. It's not it's not secret, but we are still, I think, not there. So what we are doing, we do have opinion-led insights through our people survey. One of the really interesting questions there, for example, is do you feel comfortable to speak to your manager about mental health, which mm-hmm. addresses stigma, which addresses manager capability? And 79% of the people said yes. I feel comfortable. And that's amazing, right? Because there are McKinsey studies from last year, I think, and it was one in six people. So it's, it's very, very good. So that makes me proud. We do look at the uptake, of course, of of the resources we are offering. So for more transparency, for example, we created the Wellbeing Hub. So that's a one-stop solution for well-being because before it was all over, you know, our intranet. And now you have education. So there are a lot of articles, videos, TED Talks, etc., based on our four dimensions of well-being to understand what is a depression? What is anxiety? What is bereavement, etc.? Really look at it and being able to engage with the topic and giving people the opportunity to understand better. When you think, for example, I don't know, my colleague might be suffering from depression. It's great when you when you have the possibility to learn more about it. There's this amazing video, the black dog, right? I think I, yeah. we have that on there as mm-hmm. well. And, oh. and that really explains very well what depression is. But we also have our benefits on there and we have our EAP, the Employee Assistance Program, information on there. So it's really easy to find with one click from our homepage, you're, you're on the Wellbeing Hub. And, and, and that's amazing. So we measure the uptake of that. We measure click rates. We are, we are also starting to look into absence data now. Mm-hmm. So just to see what is the status quo. 
at the moment. So we want to create a well-being dashboard. Mm. The behavioral change is very hard to measure, Rika. I think if I would know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's yeah, hard. I, I mean, know. it's it's through the people survey. It's through, you know, that is our culture changing? Do we feel mm. more comfortable to address it? But I think it's all the initiatives we are seeing. And I think it's the engagement with our leaders and with really dripping it into the organization. You know, when, when a leader comes to me and tells me you know please be in my town hall and then the feedback is overwhelmingly great afterwards because um, this leader was speaking in such an authentic way about well-being and about his own well-being you know then it's something really powerful and it does something with people mm. and we do a lot of engaged sessions so we are hosting a lot of big meetings where we just talk about our well-being strategy what we're trying to achieve and we always have a full house and we always have great engagements but yeah I, I don't have the secret to really measure hard how how it's all gonna land but we can look at some of the indicators right yeah 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 and you know that uh, this full house is already showing it I was just curious you know as a bank like banks uh, like numbers of course all company but maybe you know this is a cliche if you have any you know metrics that you have to fulfill to show you know why this is then important mm. at, at the moment we are we are um, really looking at external research because there is a lot right mm, from who yes. for example and and it, it just shows the business case but i think everyone understands when you're when you're happy and healthy you're more productive and you're going to be more loyal to the company and mm -hmm. there's you know retention we have a better access to new talent because when you think about generation z for them well-being and work-life harmony is in the top three decision makers for a new mm -hmm. employer so yeah yeah and and a lot of companies have to wake up to this you know mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they still haven't realized yeah. it so totally. yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's quite interesting yeah so the question is not really on the why because it's out there you know it's it's clear we have yeah. to do it yeah the question is more on the how you know yeah. or what so what yeah. is really impactful and effective yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah cool uh then um we are uh close to the end of the podcast and yeah I always have some uh, closing uh, questions to you so one of them is what would be your advice for future well-being leaders to make it part of the culture forget mm -hmm. meditation apps because meditation apps are great but people who are using it would use them anyway make mm. it really part of the culture talk about topics like appreciation sense of belonging and really empower your leaders and managers what is then your personal way to be well <laughs> i'm i'm trying to uh, to it doesn't always work of course but i'm trying to work in a more healthy way in a more sustainable way and it does work you know for example when so i don't have back to back meetings anymore i i take my breaks when i have a block i just go for a walk and it's amazing you have to try it when you have a mental block go for a walk and all of a sudden the penny drops. It's really fascinating what happens to your brain once you have a bit of fresh air and see something different than your screen, for example. And I really try to decide which meetings do I take, really try to lift the meeting culture and it does work. You get a lot more done and um, I'm more productive and happier. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I use it. And, you know, it's still so hard because even if I, I know that it impacts me well, I know the science behind. But when I am sitting there, oh, I should answer this last email. I should finish that before I go I to work. And then I just run out of time and I cannot go for I the know. work. So it's, it really takes a lot of self-awareness, right? And, it and does. I love actually that word to create that in employees. Mm. Yeah. 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 Thanks a lot, Nasreen. Thank um, you so much, Rika. I am super excited about this conversation because you Thank really, you. you know, summarized uh, a lot of things that that companies would love to achieve uh, mm. within their well-being initiatives and mm. the company. So I am sure this conversation will be very inspirational and uh, so forward-looking. <laughs> Thank you so much, so, Rika. 
I hope that we will reconnect soon and following your journey. Yeah, I am just very curious how, how Deutsche Bank will look like in one year. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. I hope that you found this conversation as insightful and inspiring as I did. Don't forget to keep up with us on all major podcast channels, including YouTube, Spotify, or Apple. Hit that subscribe button to express your support and be notified about the latest release of podcast. You can also connect with us on social media. We are there on LinkedIn and Instagram. Search for Wellbeing Designers. And you can also ask uh, directly questions from me or just say hi via my email address, hello at rekadeak, R-E-K-A-D-E-A-K dot -E -E com. You can also visit our website, www.wellbeing.design or my personal website, www.rekadeak.com. And remember, if you are interested uh, to explore the services of well-being designers, how we can support you and your organization to prioritize well-being and create a human-centric work environment, then again, reach out and visit our website. Together, let's continue shaping the future of work, which is truly human-centric and prioritizes well-being like never before. Thanks for tuning in. Until the next time, take care and be well.